far. A lot depends on him from Pakistan's point of view. And uh, just to confirm the Australian lineup for this test match, there it is. Border obviously captain Marsh back in the side is the vice captain. And out of the 12, Greg Campbell is the 12th man. So they've got Rackham and Alderman Hughes there as their pace attack with Peter Sleep there to bowl his leg spinners. Ian Healy, the wee keeper, and Steve Waugh is also capable of bowling as medium paces. And the Pakistan lineup, Imran Khan having a few problems getting that side together, but he's got very experienced Javed Miandad as his vice captain. Armour Malik and Shoaib Mohammed the openers. Mansoor will come in at number three. Javed probably bat at four. Ejaz at five. Imran will probably come in at six, I should think. Salam Yusuf, the wee keeper. Tosif, the off spinner. Wazim, Wakar and Akib. So Imran's got uh, quite a useful attack there. He's got uh, Akib, Wakar, Wazim, Akram and himself. And then the off spinner, Tosif. And uh, he's going to want to call on every little bit of cricket now that he's got to try and get first blood here and just looking at the field out there what uh, Imran has implemented initially he's got three slips in place and a gully that's understandable as well as a forward short leg so a very attacking field which is obviously what he's got to do having decided to ask Australia to bat first Wazi Makram will be trying to swing that ball away from the left hand to find the outside edge. And that's well left by Taylor. Well, that's a beautiful line, and Imran Khan has a lot of confidence in this fella. He believes that uh, Akram is the best fast bowler in the world at the moment. He bowled a whirlwind spell in Perth in his first outing in the Benson and Hedges World Series match across there really did bowl very quickly and I was watching him warm up out here and he did swing the ball quite a bit we're talking about that swing it's uh, obviously affected by the weather conditions so just one leg by there this uh, these conditions forecast as follows fine becoming sunny so they want to make the most of the overcast conditions just light southwesterlies, which is the case at the moment. And uh, those cool sea breezes continuing through the afternoon. Yesterday it was very hot in Melbourne, uh, very muggy. It almost cut the air with a knife. And that's ideal conditions for bowling. They'll be very happy that it's a little cooler the day out there. Certainly about uh, 25, 26 degrees here at the MCG is perfect. That's well bowled, no ball caught, it swung in a long way and it was well played by Marsh, he's managed to get that one away and as a result he's off the mark. And that's umpire Peter McConnell down at the outer end. And at the members end, Rick Evans is doing the job. So, umpires two want to uh, get it all right. Over. wide and down the leg side no wicket for two welcome back to the melbourne career ground a little bit of a breeze keeping things relatively cool here big scoreboard with a replay facility and out on the center the australians batting having been put in no wicket for two mark taylor is on strike and he hasn't scored yet they'll be attacking him just outside off stump got three slips in a gully waiting for a catch there and he's not going to be tempted to have a little flirt outside off stump but having said that he's going to have to cater for the odd bouncer too because on the leg side they have a man just behind square now that's an interesting position he's not at forward short leg he's behind square and i suspect he's there for the one that gets a bit steep hits the gloves and pops up towards leg gully So 
and at his pace and his bounce to he be quite an awkward delivery the one into the rib cage he's got the one to go away from the left-hander outside leg stump when I mean, that one comes naturally but also it's a big swinger of the ball could follow him back and cramp for room I mean that's a good position the leg gully also a wide mid wicket out there just in case he just tempted to play the pull shot or hook shot but he's had such a marvellous 1989, 1,219 test runs, 64.15. On the other hand, a young man too, 23 years of age, only played the 30 test matches. A fairly big impact there. He's averaging just 28 runs uh, for his wickets. So he's better than four wickets per match. Uh, got through the gully and so Taylor is off the mark Shoab doing the fielding down there so a little sigh of relief no doubt for Mark Taylor so, yes I think Tony collectively this group of cricketers out there including Mark Taylor two runs in 16 minutes there'll be a lot of nervous energy being expended out there there's no doubt about it the ability to harness that nervous energy as the bouncer Tony Gregg talked about before, that was a wayward delivery. It didn't bounce too much. Uh, he would have been hoping to let that one sail through around about middle stump. But look at this, causing the batsman not much trouble. But he did take his eye off that. Yes, he uh, certainly did. And what's more, he left the bat up there. It actually surprised him a little bit, I think. It wasn't a great bounce because it was just a little offline. Had it been a bit straighter, he might have been in a spot of bother. Let's have another look at uh, this short delivery. Watch Taylor's reaction here. Just turning his head as the ball went past. He must have thought that was going to hit him on the back of the crash helmet. It didn't. And it will have the effect, I should think, of um, just making him just a little more alert to that short one. And the bowler, of course, will be trying to drive him back, hoping to hit him on the pads and have a better chance, therefore, of getting him out LBW. Oh, he's dropped it. Well, would you believe it? He's found the outside edge. That was the plan. Straight to Jarvid, and he shelled it out. Oh, well, Jarvid, it has a few problems coming into this match with a sprained wrist. He's had it in a splint. And of all the men on the field to go to, Jarvid, normally one of the best fielders in the Pakistani side. So the catch is going down. It's followed the Pakistan side now to Australia. And at a vital stage in this test match, this is how it happened. It's good delivery and a straightforward one from Javid. He had his eye on it all the way. It obviously didn't hit the middle of his hands. And look at the reaction of the bowler. He's been bowling for that and found the outside edge. That is very frustrating. Melbourne career ground looking at picture. Was he Macram? Has to start all over again. He's already had a catch dropped by Javid Miandad. And that will stay with him. That little thought will stay with him until they get rid of Taylor. But he's an experienced cricketer. He'll get it out of his mind, I should think. Or certainly, when it matters, he will be in there concentrating. He's going to have to make up for it, mind you. Well, bowl too. It's the bowlers. Uh, we saw Imran Khan at the end of the last over, just looking at his footing, and also was he Macram? Be worried about the sandy surface here, and you can't blame the bowlers too, particularly if you've got a little bit of an injury problem. Akram comes into this match with a groin problem. Imran Khan, uh, little niggling hamstring, but certainly the one thing you don't need is to have uncertainty at your feet. You've got to be able to concentrate on your line and your length. It's a bit like a long jumper. And you've really got to hit the line in the right place. Put all your energy into bowling to be moving at a top pace at the point of delivery. Carry the momentum forward. 
and there were signs of wear and tear, particularly beyond the wicket area in the run-ups in the one-day matches. So we'll keep our eye on that. We'll monitor that uh, as each day goes by. Certainly it looked good before play. Tony Gregg made that point. As they worked hard on the area just short of the crease, I think he's having a few problems with the front line there. His spike's not quite gripping, and I think what he was doing there was trying to loosen it up a little bit so that his spikes wouldn't slip across the surface. They could dig into a few grooves. Have a look at this. He comes down right on the line there. And it's that area that he's actually trying to scuff up a little bit. He's slipping a little bit on the front foot. That was his straight one. Didn't swing at all and therefore hit the pad. But well played by Taylor. Long way forward. As you would expect from the uh, from the senior players in the Pakistan side, Imran Khan and Wazim Akram, a lot of responsibility to try and make inroads into this Australian batting lineup because uh, then we see a uh, quite dramatic fall off in experience. In fact, uh, Akib Javid. Oh, and that's a good bouncer. But once again, as he sticks that bouncer in, so he stretches his front foot forward and over the line he goes. Now, that was a better one. It was very straight and it certainly had Taylor pulling his head out of the way very quickly. It reinforces the thought that this young man is a very talented young bowler, very fast. And that is just about perfection in the bouncer. He will have taken some confidence, too, in Taylor taking his eye away. Oh, he's hit him. That, he went wide on that occasion, and that really must have hurt him. It's hit him straight on the elbow, and really, that is a nasty little number, that one. We'll have another look at that in a minute. It's no wicket for six. Well, there it is. No wicket for six, and Mark Taylor in trouble. He's been hit on the elbow by a magnificent delivery. It's... Uh, the physio, Errol Orcott, is out there now with a magic spray. He's going to try and take a bit of sting out of uh, his problem. He really does look in quite a bit of bother there. Yes, and uh, quite rightly, look at this. In two minds, whether to go down, whether to play, and I mean, sheer pace did him, had him in two minds, and... That coming about for some earlier dis deliveries. And have a look at this. Beautiful action. Very quick arm action. And that delivery. Just a delivery or two before. Straight over the top of middle stump. Had him ducking. And that one just the right height. About ribcage high. And not much flesh in that area. Around about the elbow, the forearm. He'll be looking to see whether or not he's got any strength in his fingers. And that magic spray's all right. But... Uh, we can only really talk about the pain. It's, it's one deep and he's in a lot of pain. As you can see that he is trying to clench his fist there. Well, the important thing is to be able to grip, grip the bat. And uh, it no doubt feels very weak at the moment. The problem about being hit in the elbow there is that you tend to lose all the feeling in your hand. And then it's very difficult really to get a decent grip on the bat. And uh, of course... See his right hand's the top hand, and um, he's got to be able to bend that elbow because you get the elbow right up when you're on the back foot especially, in order to play defensively. Well, he seems as if um, he's going to have a go, but uh, he's not comfortable. He's thrown the challenge back to the bowler. I'm at hurt, but not enough to see the end of me. So seven overs now completed. The score, no wicket for seven. They're scoring it around about a run and over. There's no rush as far as Australia are concerned. Imran Khan won the toss. He bit the bullet and decided to field first. They've already dropped one catch. Marsh and Taylor are out there doing pretty well at the moment. Wazim Apkram is vitally important to this cause, this Pakistan cause, to take up commentary now. It's going to be Bill Laurie and Ian Chappell. Thank you, Tony. Good morning, all, and... It's hard work out there for the batsman at the moment. There's a little bit of movement. A little bit of bounce. 
one does feel that maybe the Pakistan bowls are just a fraction short despite the swing and bounce. Not getting the Australian batsman onto the front foot too often. Both Marsh and Taylor trying to play straight. The early overs. Every time he bowls a bounce, it's a no ball. It wasn't Akram getting over the front line, but the bounces themselves are fairly straight. He's forcing the batsman onto the back foot with the bounce, but he's not following up with the good length delivery. He's just a fraction short. Well, good morning, Ian Chubb. Good morning, Bill, and uh, good morning, all. I think to back up your the point that you just made, Bill, uh, one delivery that he did pitch up and it swung, got the edge uh, from Mark Taylor, and uh, I can't believe that Jarvid put that down. It was a it was a sitter, but it was exactly the delivery you're you're talking about. That's a good delivery as well. But I think you would admit, as a left-handed opening batsman, that's the hardest one to play early in your innings. Well, that's right. The outswinger to the left-hander when he's bowling to Mark Taylor. On this occasion, he, he does him with the angle. He's close to the stumps, and the ball just moves away, and that's a beautiful delivery. He's a wonderful bowler, wasn't Macram? He's, he's lively, he's accurate. He does swing the ball, and that one just went across with the angle and just beat the outside edge. So plenty of tension for the batsman. It's a good morning to bowl. There's crowd cover. There's no doubt as a batsman early in your innings, um, if you can sit on the back foot and have a little bit more time to watch the ball, it, uh, it gets you in. It gets you used to the pace of the pitch. It gets you used to the pace of the bowler. And it gives you time to get started. The last thing you want is to be uh, coming forward, searching for the ball while it's swinging around, or it's usually going to move off the seam as well with a new ball and a first morning test match pitch. So that's the last thing you want to be doing. So if that's what the batsman doesn't want to be doing, that's what the bowler should be trying to make him do. It's neither the batsman looks comfortable at all. Marsh is struggling at the moment because he's getting the odd one to swing back in. A bit of trouble there with the popping crease. A little bit of moisture on the first morning. Not like England where you take huge pieces out of the pitch, but certainly there is some moisture in this pitch, as you would expect on the first day. He'll be very disappointed he hasn't picked up Mark Taylor, a vital wicket in top order. You must hold your catches while you've got that new ball, particularly when you win the toss and send the opposition in. Silly point coming in, so Imran asking his bowler as he's at leg gully. There's a short leg. That's sort of a short cover there for the one that Marsh may squeeze out between bat and pad. So they're applying plenty of pressure. The other thing the bowler asked for there was if the slips could just spread out a little more. He asked Jarbert to move across at first slip. And uh, then, accordingly, second and third slip moved a bit wider. Now that would suggest that he's going to give him a few deliveries pushing across, angling across the right-hander. Now Marsh is susceptible to those sort of deliveries. I think it was at Lord's we saw him nick one. And the bowling of Graham Dilly. It's none for eight. Looking across the gardens here, some of the uh, lovely old architecture here in Melbourne. Plenty of gardens and parks around the MCG. I say, uh, coming in from the airport, Bill, it's pretty dry. You haven't had a lot of rain in Melbourne? No, it's been very humid, uh, Ian, but not a lot of rain. This was Macken continues from the outer end. It's popped up just short of the short cover. This is a wonderful spell of bowling. He's a beautiful athlete. Fast arm action. Nice and tall. He's squaring Marsh up. It's a testing time. And this is what test cricket is all about. Survival in the first session. And there's a bit of moisture about. Very good delivery. Marsh... The problem he had there, he wasn't sure whether that was the in-swinger. Big shout there from Salim Yusuf, but that was a very ambitious shout, but a great delivery. That's the problem that Marsh has got. He's not quite sure whether it's the ball coming back into him or the one that's leaving him. That's causing him a lot of problems. This one strikes him on the thigh pad. Beat him all ends up, really. The bat was nowhere near that. And he's really stirred up. Was a Macram. He's quite lively. <laughs> it's 
Jeff Marsh has been around a long time. He's only played 34 test matches. A reasonable average of 34.81, 400s and 950s. He's been really tested here this morning. With some wonderful bowling. And you can feel the tension around the ground. A crowd of about 12 to 13,000 in already. Marsh against Pakistan, averaging 47. 350s in his fourth test match. But there's a lot of tension out there. Certainly not a confident start by the Australians after being sent into bat. But they're surviving. That's so very important in the first hour. Try and see off the opening pair. It's unusual in the first 45 minutes for test match. The batsmen actually haven't played an attacking shot yet. There hasn't been any loose deliveries. They haven't attempted to hook the short pitch delivery. Probably does indicate the fact that they are just a fraction short the Pakistan bowlers, not enticing the batsmen to drive. Not buying with a lot of width at all, mainly at the stumps. Over. Another maiden, it's none for eight. 11 to Mark Taylor, 2 to Geoffrey Marsh. What has been a real battle here for the Australians. They've got through 11 overs without loss. They've been tested by both Wasm Akram and Imran Khan. The last delivery of the previous over struck Marsh on the thigh pad going down leg side. It was a bit late with the stroke. They went up for the catch, but it was certainly off the thigh pad. Umpire Rick Evans officiating at the members' end. Still plenty of tension. And that is a beautiful delivery. Once again, backing up Bill Laurie's point about bringing the batsman forward. Yes, he must get them on the front foot when the ball's moving. He's a, he's a wonderful bowler. He's got the ability like Alan Davison to swing the ball away from the left-hander it just moved enough you don't have to go a long way beat the outside edge tail committed to the front foot oh and on that occasion beat him with a bit of bounce and pace but it doesn't go down in the scorebook as a wicket now, the man who must be feeling a little bit seedy at the moment should be Jarvid Meandad because he's dropped Mark Taylor and all this effort has really been wasted. It should be on Boone or Border or Jones, really, because he's Jarvid dropped a sitter and now Wasm Ackman has to knock over Mark Taylor again. He's trying very hard, but just cannot find the outside edge. It's a pretty good leave. It wasn't all that far outside off stump. He's got great concentration, Mark Talent. And if Wasson gets a little bit wider, he'll play the square cut. This one bounced well over the stumps. Did move back. The thing that makes this man so dangerous, apart from the fact that he is quite lively, is the fact that he moves the ball both ways. So you've always got the batsman in two minds. If he just swung the ball away, he would be a much easier bowler to play because you would get used to it and you'd know which ones to leave but because he can bring the one back you sometimes find that you're playing at balls outside off stump that you would prefer to be leaving alone very interesting action as well not a long run he's a beautiful athlete always appears to be well balanced as his captain suggested he's a great thinker as well he's really testing the batsman here with some magnificent bowling Went out wide on the crease. That was a lovely over. Almost a perfect over there from Wazim Akram. None for 17. He's not necessarily showing it. You try and not show anything to the opposition. But a blow on the elbow. Such as he sustained from uh, Wazim Akram. Very disconcerting.
quite right as well, uh, Rodney. It is uh, good afternoon. Not by much, but in some parts of Australia, it is still morning. Well, you knew I was a Western Australian, Rich, and you were saying good morning to me, and I appreciate that. And I've just come from Adelaide. That's one of the ways the Australian openers can uh, break up this very good Pakistan opening attack. Quick running between the wickets. Taylor is carrying that right arm, there's no doubt about that. It is uh, extremely painful. He's now wearing a a guard on the forearm and elbow and there's a lot of grimacing going on out there and a lot of little movements if you've ever been struck in that way you know exactly what they're saying they're saying I am actually in agony it's the worst part about it for Mark Taylor is the fact that it's his top hand he grips the bat with that hand you'll find that the majority of batsmen will grip the, the bat tighter with the top hand than they do with the bottom hand. And when you get a blow in that region, it's often very hard to grip anything tightly. It's the one that's pushed away towards the slips with the right hand of batting. Variation, so far as Wazi Makram is concerned. Sun's just starting to break through now. Left-handers angle is always dangerous to the right-handed batsman. And he's got the ability to bring it both ways. Almost on every occasion he's attempted the bouncer, he's overstepped this morning. They look like a new pair of boots and uh, most likely are pretty new. <laughs> that bit you can see hanging out the end is, is the sock. And there's a toe on the end of that somewhere and there's a reason for that. Over. Which will explain at the end of, or at the beginning of next over. Australia none for 19. Now we get 420 Australia. 15 overs gone. Taylor has strike Wazimak Ram is to bowl. Those viewers who may have joined us uh, after the incident where Taylor was hit we can show you what happened, and I think the key to the pain Taylor is in at the moment is the way the ball actually bounces off his forearm. There's no softened, no softened impact there at all. Have a look at it after this ball from Wazi Mikram. The ball just bounces off the forearm as though it's uh, gone into a brick wall. But unfortunately, bones are not like brick walls. And that's why Mark Taylor's having a few problems out there. It was a brute of a delivery and not sure whether it's caught in on the elbow or I think maybe just below the elbow. And as soon as it hit him, there was no doubt that that was going to hurt. Richie was saying that the reason he's still batting is that 
he wants to protect the rest of the players. He's absolutely right. There may be just another reason that if he does go off, he may not come back because uh, oh, I, for one, wouldn't be at all surprised if there's not a little broken bone in there somewhere. That was such a nasty delivery. He's a very courageous young man and a very fine player. I know a lot of other players that would be off having an x-ray in hospital now, but he's a, not that sort of fella. He reckons it's his job to open the batting for Australia and he doesn't go until he gets out. I won't bother running for that. No stroke played and uh, a deliberate move by the batsman to pad the ball away. It's a dead ball. a very sure stroke but it's brought four runs and it's no wicket for 24. 